Yeah, just, I think it's, no, I don't know. I know, I thought I put it on there. Oh, I'll check. Just double check it, would you? <clears throat> Send it to you if it works out great. If it doesn't, Okay, I'm going to call the Citrus County School Board meeting to order, and you can just keep your seats for a minute. Um, today in Citrus County, we had a tragedy that happened at our Canto School. We heard from many staff members, students, and administrators about the courage that our staff, students, administrators, student services, our first responders, deputies, and sheriffs contributed in caring today for our students. Today, we are all Panthers. I wanted to take a minute to ask Pastor Stephen Lane, who is here for his daughter from the Faith Lutheran Church, to just give us a opening prayer as we start today, because I felt like today was a very unique day in Citrus County. And I felt like we needed to maybe just pause for a minute. So, Pastor. Very good. Well, that's great. There are many things in this life we don't understand. We believe that we are in your care, and that's a great comfort. We pray for a number of things today. First, we pray for this young person who's now in the hospital, Lord. And, and we pray for him physically she would spare his life. We pray for him emotionally, Lord, mentally, even spiritually, what's ever necessary. We pray that you're close to him and keep him in your care. We pray for his family as well too, Lord. Obviously a very difficult day, but we pray that you send your peace and your comfort in a way only that you can. We pray for the students of Lacanto and the teachers. We indeed thank you for their courage and and for those who responded to this situation. And we pray for their welfare, for their healing too, Lord, that you would provide it. Finally, we pray for our community as a whole, all of us. And our prayer is that we could be your help in, in healing. I, we know that you use us often as your hands, your feet, and your voice. Help us always to be instruments of healing. And it's in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I have a special person that I'm going to introduce you all to. Miss Anna Lane is a senior at Crystal River High School, and she is in the Health Academy nursing program. Miss Lane is now a Florida licensed certified nursing assistant. She is captain of the swim team. She happens to hold two school records now in the 500 free and the 200 free. In her spare time, she gives violin lessons. She is a member of the Suncoast swim team, and she also works as a lifeguard at the Bicentennial Pool. 
Miss Lane plans to get her major in, help me out? Kinesiology. Kinesiology. And then go on to get her doctorate in physical therapy. And I'm hoping that we convince her to go to a school that she swims at, too. Board members, Superintendent Hemel, and audience, I'd like to introduce to you Miss Anna Lane, who's going to play both a special song of her choosing as well as the national anthem. <clears throat> Say our national anthem. Pledge. Pledge. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I pledge my allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Anna. <clears throat> I 
I have one more thing that I want to uh, to do, and if um, turning on my monitor, if um, Mr. Clotter, I think is is helping out with that, or. <laughs> Tomorrow is a day that we have set aside to honor the very people whose service whose service and fighting have given us our very freedom. In this room, one of those people we have the great honor of working with daily. And if somebody would like to put his, his, uh, that picture up there, if you're able to. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Oh, never mind. I'll, I'll show it here. Um, no. No problem. Um, one of these people that's very uh, important, and I'll show the picture at the end, and that we get to work with, is Assistant Superintendent Mike Mullen. Mike Mullen is a veteran who took his basic training at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. He completed the officer basic training in Alexandria, Virginia. And then for those of you who don't know, he went on to airborne school. Upon finishing airborne school, he was stationed at uh, Fort Ord, uh, California for four years. And he was detached with the 13th Engineering Battalion, where he was battalion leader twice and an executive officer to the major. Before being promoted to captain, on behalf of the Citrus County School Board, I'd like to thank retired Army Captain Michael Mullen and all of those in our district who have served to give us the freedom that we get to enjoy. Thank you, Captain Mullen. share with you all was Mr. Mullen getting his, I believe, captain's bars <coughs> with his uh, wife and, I believe, father up there. <clears throat> and with that, we'll go ahead and, and continue our regularly scheduled program. Before we uh, move to adopt the agenda, as recommended by the superintendent, I do need to add an item, which I will pass out to you all. The superintendent has requested um, for good cause if we could add um, approval and appointment of Susan, Suzanne Swain, Director of Human Services, effective November 11th, 2015 and I'm suggesting that we uh, add it just prior to for giving us the golden rod do it under so yeah under a uh, do it under a so that then she, she's gonna then come before us so we'll do it right before then so instead of uh, we'll do it as an A <coughs> so if I can just get a recommendation uh, with that addition well, also Oh, okay. Presentations of the four. Superintendent's making a list of four. She's going to give it. If I can be number four, I'd be similar. And number four is Linda Powers. Yeah. 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 And whenever someone's ready, I'll... I move to, to accept the adoption of the agenda as recommended by the superintendent with adding Linda Powers. Number 400 presentations, and Suzanne Swain as A under School Support Services. Second. I have a motion by Miss 
Brian, a second by Ms. Balfour, to approve the agenda as recommended by the superintendent with the addition of um, A4 under presentations for Linda Powers and under um, su uh, su uh, school support services A, approval, the appointment of Susan Swain, Director of Human Services, effective November 11, 2015. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Uh, citizens' comments. Um, I have one green card, but it is for an item that would be at our 5:15 hour. Is there any other green cards this time? And with that, we will move to the consent agenda. I move to approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion by Ms. Powers, a second by Mr. Don to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Ms. Verderami, would you please read the uh, recognition of donations? Yes, sir. We have several donations today. A $3,000 donation to Marine Science Station from the San Francisco Foundation, Mr. and Mrs. Arnold Ross. $1,000 donation to Crystal High School from Paula Lee. $1,000 donation to Citrus High School from Chuck Everidge. $2,000 donation to Lacanto High School from Diane and Katie Dameron. And a five hundred dollar donation to Forest Ridge Elementary School for Men's Auxiliary by DFW Post 10087. Thank you, and we thank you, our community, for supporting our students and our staff. And with that, we will move on to finances. And Ms. Tammy Wilson. Good afternoon. I would like to request um, approval for the disposal of the surplus property. As listed, um, I would like to amend it. One item on here that is listed as missing stolen has been found. So um, I'm not sure how I do that. We can just ask for that. Um, if, if is that correct, you can make the amendment on the. Amend it. Okay. We found item eight eight three six zero. So um, eight eight three six zero. Yes, ma'am. Moving from lost to found. Moving from lost to found and usable. Oh, even better. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to approve the disposal of surplus property with the amendment of item A8360 to be moved from lost to found. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Balfour, a second by Ms. Bryan to approve the disposal of surplus property. Um, with a change of A8360 going from lost to found. Any questions or comments? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Mm -hmm. When I looked over this material, it, it, it concerned me on the missing stolen items. It concerned me in the fact that we have um, a lot of devices that are going out into the schools and just wanted to make sure that we are doing an adequate job and we have checks and balances in place to ensure that we are keeping track of our inventory. And I know we spoke okay. and, um, you know, I, I felt somewhat comfortable after we talked, but yet there, there was an issue here that when I inquired was that these missing and stolen items were from one school. Yes. And I felt like the message, you know, it's important to me as a board member that we are maintaining our inventory. I know your inventory clerk has a very large job to make sure uh, they are keeping track of all the inventory, the capital items, the electronic items. And it upset me that there was quite a bit of cost items on here, not just the Apple iPad, but there was a, a Dell Latitude, there was some of these turning point clickers. Uh, systems that you said may have been uh, surplus and just didn't get taken off the inventory. Right. Can you touch on this a little bit? Um, um, I did look over some figures for you, um, in particular to the iPads. Um, in 2014, we had 11 iPads that were reported um, stolen. The total purchase price was $4,369. Of that, we collected $4,295.50 in restitution. 
and in 2015 so far, we have um, 10, well now nine, uh, $4,695, save that one, I'm not sure the price of that one. And um, for loss and repair so far this year, we have collected over $10,000. So um, even though they are showing up missing, we are being able to recoup most of the money that we um, lose. And so is so that money going back into um, technology to purchase, to repurchase those, or does yes, it go sir. back to the general fund of the school, or how does that work? It goes back to the district to replace the price to go back where we purchased new iPads from. Okay. And so there's a way that you could do a cross-reference on, say, this 071508 missing stolen iPad. You could tell me if that was... I would have to go back to the school to find out exactly, but... But the school has that those references. Yes, sir. Okay. So they would be able to uh, tell us that that missing stolen iPad uh, was um, reimbursed. This district was reimbursed for X amount of dollars. Yes. And how is that? How is that amount set? Is that prorated, or how does the amount set on how much is reimbursed? I'm gonna ask Dr. G on that. I think it's probably the purchase <clears throat> price because most of them are only a year old. I haven't been involved in that. The school, sets, the school sets the price, so I'm assuming they probably asked for the purchase price or the placement price. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5 0. Budget update? Okay. Um, at this time, um, but just kind of up in the air, we're in the middle. Of, they're in the middle of negotiations, so I really just wanted to know if there was any questions that you had. Um, you did receive your first financial statements for information and your first budget amendment, so kind of wanted to leave that open if you had any questions at this time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. School Support Services, Johnny Bishop. Is this may be the last time we, uh, we we see you quite in this capacity this way, or well, we, we know we'll see you around. I think today will be a transition period because uh, I just wanted to come up and um, uh, share with the board that I have the distinct honor and privilege to uh, request the appointment of Suzanne Swain as the next director of Human Resources, effective uh, November 11, 2015. <coughs> Board members, I'll entertain a motion. Second. Second. Was, was that correct? November 11th? November 11th, yes, ma'am. I have a motion by Ms. Powers, a second by Ms. Bryant, to approve the appointment of Suzanne Swain, Director of Human Resources, effective November 11th, 2015. Any questions or comments? Are we going to be able to hear from uh, Ms. Swain? Is she going to approach? I'm hoping she's next. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping if we do this, we're, we get her. <laughs> but, but there's no school tomorrow, you know that. <laughs> that is correct. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5 0. Congratulations, Ms. Swain. Thank you. You now have the toughest job now. <laughs> <laughs> I will, I, will, I will turn over the... Uh, I just noticed that uh, Mr. Bishop's sweating less now. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Good afternoon, Director Swain. I said that to Mr. Hebert the other day, and he's like, whoa, that is different to hear. So I'm very excited and very honored and want to thank you all for all of your support as coordinator, and I know all of your support as director, so I appreciate that. Thank you. I am here to ask for approval of the instructional and support recommendations as listed on the goldenrod. Thank you. And if you just give us a moment. And board members, whenever one of you is ready, you're welcome to go ahead and make a motion. I move to approve the instructional and support recommendations. Second. Motion by Ms. Bryan, a second by Ms. Powers to approve the instructional and support recommendations. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Aye. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you again and have a good evening. Thank you. Oh, wait, we still were going to talk to her, right? What is your vision? Though? That's right. <laughs> you were supposed to bring we a vision going, statement we are this going to a recruiting fair on next Thursday, Wednesday. We are going to a recruiting fair at UCF, so I hope to bring back some candidates and potential teachers to us. So we are very excited about that. We also, with the support of Mr. Bishop, have a Twitter account for human resources, so look for that. We will be advertising, we will be sharing many things regarding to the human resources department and we will be advertising as well. So we're very excited about that. And so you thank send you. Us your cell phone number so we can contact you anybody. Absolutely. I will send you my cell phone number and you can call me at any time. Absolutely. Thank you. I think she defriended me. <laughs> thank you. Mr. Clotter. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, members of the school board, Superintendent Mrs. Himmel. And I want to extend some congratulations to Mrs. Swain. And if there's anything that uh, our Ed Services Department can do to assist you in your role, Susie, please don't hesitate to uh, ask us. And also, uh, Ms. Balfour, in your, in your role as a, a director of uh, AES. If you recall, Last month I came to you and I kind of shared uh, that we would actually be getting some FSA results for our students in grades 3 through 10 and some EOCs and things like that. So we've had an opportunity to actually look at those scores and actually have a data day for our principals. And we did them by elementary, middle, and high school. So as far as our budget update today, I've asked Mr. Simon if he can kind of share with you the information that you did actually get from him. Um, what we've actually done is sat down with all the principals, gone through this. Again, we basically say, what's our ahas? What are the things that we basically need to learn from this? And where do we need to go with our plans? I just want to caution the board again. Back in years past, when we made the transition to FCAT and then FCAT 2.0, this is another it's just another milestone for us, and we need to basically understand the assessment and basically look and see about those standards and making sure that there is a connection of PD, curriculum, and the assessment. And remember those three triangles for our department. So I'll turn it over to Mr. Simon. He can share with you some brief specifics about the FSA. Thank you. So we'll <coughs> forward to you electronically the document that has Data. It was. I felt guilty. It was as though I've given you a map to a hidden treasure, and it's all written in Greek. <laughs> and I want to make sure, because we tried to explain in the body of the email the context of this data. First and foremost, not all of it is data that is designed, determined by the Department of Education yet. What we do know and we try to clarify that in the kind of table of content structure, we do know that the science data, the FCAT 2.0 data, the U.S. history, the biology, the civics, are data that is firm, unchanged, not to be modified. We also know that the state developed data regarding third grade promotion linked to the old scales, 13, 14 scales that will not be changed. We also know that they did the same action with regard to 10th grade English language arts. What we used, what Mr. Claude referred to in guiding school teams to ask those questions, and you remember, Mrs. Himmel, the Levon Dukes Award is given to a superintendent in the district that asks hard questions, that leads discussions, that influence positively student outcomes. So we did. We follow that same pattern by what does the data tell us? And the what data, and I want to acknowledge it this time, the what is only because of hard work of folks like John Mullen, Amy Crowell, Janet Selman, Karen Stofchek, and our and research accountability team. Well, again, I, I'm kind of like the one who pushes the nudges. They, they are work. They work hard. What John did then, based on the recommendation by the commissioner, was work with Performance Matters to design a script that actually took these T-scores, these numbers between 20 and 80, for third grade English language arts up to 10th grade for the mathematics grades 3 through 10, and redesigned them to match 
if the commissioner's proposal for, for scales and levels goes through as she initially recommended last month, what would that look like in terms of percent of proficiency in levels one, two, three, four, and five of Citrus County students? And what would that look like in the reporting categories that guide schools and teachers now to say, we're doing the right thing, or we need to make changes? So that's what Mr. Claude referred to in the discussions. If that was not there, we would not be able to have those deeper conversations about, are we doing the right thing? So that part is the so what. So what are we doing in response to what this data says? Please be clear and knowing in this document, and we laugh about the, the spheres that are bouncing there, that this is based on projections, a projection of what the state board may or may not agree to come January. I want to make sure you know that in January, the state board has already said, we're not sure those scales and levels are high enough. The teams of teachers across the state are saying, we're thinking these scales and levels are too high. The commissioner is saying, it's just right. The commissioner who mediated between what the governing appointed board said and what the team of teachers have recommended. So we will not know that until the middle end of January for sure. So again, while we try to extrapolate and make some suggestions and thoughts about what this would mean for students to guide what we're doing now, because come January it's too late to look at how we're supporting students, particularly the struggling and the advanced. The last thing in this packet that I gave you was data that we updated as we received it with regard to ACT, SAT, AP College Board, industry certification, international baccalaureate, and a few things I want to point out. And, and you know, and I, and I know I've been accused of always looking at the optimistic outcomes of our students, but I will tell you it's hard to not look at that. And, and, and our team knows that I, we always ask those hard questions about things that we are not achieving where we should. But when you examine what our teachers and students do in the state of Florida, it is important that we all know and that it's clearly communicated when it comes to third, fourth, fifth grade reading and mathematics, we are in the top 5% of the state of Florida, 5 to 10%. And I've said this repeatedly so I get tired of hearing myself saying it, when you rank order the districts in terms of achievement, it typically goes like this, St. John's, Santa Rosa, Sarasota, and then Citrus. We do not fit into that scheme of hierarchy of the top when it comes to school districts that have extraordinarily <coughs> high incomes and high student achievement outcomes. We have this, today I recall noticing 67% of our students on free and reduced lunch and our outcomes match districts that have 21% or 28% or 33% free and reduced lunch. So again, the commendations go to teachers, to parents, to students, and to leadership teams across our district, and to a board who believes that we're doing the right thing. That is also matched by what, our, what I call our end game data. When you look at and examine carefully the ACT, SAT data, and you see that it's the highest we've been in 10 years, exceeding the state, exceeding the global, and it's no longer nation, it's global data now throughout the world, you have to feel confident to know that we're moving in the right direction. Mrs. Himmel, are we actually there achieving that international highest quality standard? No, but I'm telling you the pathway is clearly marked and the achievement and approaches are clearly defined and teams are working hard. In closing, if you have ever questions on this, when it changes, we'll give you the updates. School grades will not be coming out if they indeed do come out until the end of December or January most likely, and that too is always in the paper, the news, so I want to make sure you're aware of those issues. But right now our teachers and school teams have pushed that aside. The focus is on getting students ready for state tests that begin in two weeks for high school students, and then for all students come April, March and April. Board members, did you have any questions on that before we... Thank you. Thank you very much. So I think we'll come back later on in the year with the State of the District Part 2 with some in-depth. Um, I, I do want to send kudos to the Research and Accountability Department. 
Because what you see in that document right there is not what we get from the state. It is through a tireless efforts of that department in order to be able to get it so that it makes sense, and it's going to make sense down the line. Uh, board members, again, in Ed Services, uh, after an incident like today, uh, we just recognize that we're responsible for the cognitive and the affective domain of that child, of those children. And so I just want to send kudos to the uh, Student Services Department for, for reacting the way they did. I just wanted to add, and Mr. Simon didn't um, take credit for this or his department, when we received the scores from the state, Mr. Simon's department took our scores and our test results and they broke them down by standards so that every score the teacher could look at um, what students were doing, what percentages passed each standard. So we are one of two school districts that have done that throughout the state, Citrus and Miami-Dade. We don't really fit with Miami-Dade either, but um, maybe they don't fit with us. But so thank you all for that because that was great. great. I've got a question. Mm -hmm. Um, we sent those T scores out to the, the to the parents, and I just want to know if we had any feedback on that. Um, on that. Yeah. What happened? The parents didn't get T scores. They had the T score was transposed to a percentile. And the last time I addressed you, I said it was kind of like stacking every 233,000 third graders in a row and saying who was in first place, who was number 100, and who was in last place. The state of Florida will not, that's all parents will get. And so the challenge is, what does that mean in terms of did my child, was my child proficient? You know, was it 45%, 55%, 60%? Will not know. That group of students last year will not know. And I shared with Andrew with our local Chronicle newspaper the same problem of do we communicate these transposed scores? because it's going to confuse them again to say this is what right now the commissioner is recommending and if they change that again what will that say about I, I essentially could have three different numbers attached to what I did on the test so I am telling you that parents were confused that called us I, I don't want them and here's the danger Mr. Dodd I don't want them to be callous to say it doesn't mean anything but on the other hand I can't we can't tell them something that it is not so the only hope that we say is that the data this year will have a level and a scale and a determination of what is considered proficient. And I want to alert the board too. That's another contention because there is some discussion right now that says level three, which has always been proficient in Florida, may be now termed as just average. It's an average or, as stated at the last state board meeting, a C-grade performance. So the question is, is C-grade performance considered proficient in Florida? So that's another topic, a definition of term that's being bantered around to see. And, and there are members of State Board of Education who are saying maybe it should be level four or five that's proficient. So none of this is decided. I think your input as a body, a Board of Education for a district, would be important to be heard as this comes forth in December and in January. I think we're going to find board that as we come closer to our annual Florida School Board Association's meeting in December, they are pretty much on, on ready to, to put some language forward. Um, they've been adopting it in committees, and I think they'll make a, an, another stance. I wish I could say that people will listen, and the people meaning the lawmakers. Um, it's just not been evident right now. Uh, Mr. Simon, I, I do want to also, just from the board side, uh, thank you. Uh, thank your team. Um, Mr. Mullen, uh, and this is Mr. John Mullen, because we often say Mr. Mullen and we're, we're thinking it's Mike. Mr. John Mullen, um, who's here at early hours in the morning, um, walked me through the other day the details of some of what is being provided to schools and as someone who used to sit on, on the uh, school improvement plan development as a parent, this was exactly the type of information that we just had, didn't have. And if it wasn't for your department, um, our schools wouldn't have it. And I am grateful. And I'm grateful for a superintendent that makes sure that our staff is looking at that and has those tools uh, because we are standards-based. And the one thing that we appear to, to know right now is that teaching standards base 
may be the very different, uh, unique, special thing that Citrus County is doing. And uh, I'm grateful that we, we are in the position we are. Board members, is there anyone else? I think we actually are on to move uh, for approval minutes. Second. I have a motion by uh, Ms. Powers, a second by Ms. Balfour to approve the minutes. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5 0. Attorney Legal Matters, and I think Mr. West, you do have some things. Um, um, as you were there, the there was an issue with the with the garbage, and they went in front of the administrative law judge. And the administrative law judge gave back a ruling on home rule powers, as far as the school district has the home rule powers to be able to, you know, basically take our trash where we want to, and and to uh, that we're not confined by the by the ordinance or the landfill. Um, I know you'll remember when that came out. The county appealed that ruling, and they filed a petition for writ of certiorari. It goes in front of the circuit court judge. Is how you appeal the administrative law judge ruling in this situation. Um, I've read their petition for writ. Uh, the response brief was filed last week uh, by Goodfellows. I've asked the board to allow me to file a motion to file what's called a uh, amicus curiae brief, which is we're not a party. I have to actually ask the court to get permission. It's like a friend of the court brief, but I would like to do that to shore up a couple things, what points that I think need to be placed in front of the court. You mean that in the motion? Uh, yes, because I know the school board <coughs> is the only, you know, you all the ones that are, can contract and sue and be sued and everything. You're not actually suing anybody. You're not being sued. Um, but before I represent the, the, on behalf of the school board to do that, I would like for you all to go ahead and give me the, the, the uh, permission to, to file the motion and, and a brief if, all, if I'm allowed to. Can you give us that in the form of, of some type of wording that we can do that in the motion? Yes, yeah, so it would just be that uh, to approve the school board attorney to file a motion um, for court permission to file an amicus curiae brief in the Citrus County, uh, Florida versus Goodfellas roll off waste disposal case. I know what you just said. I was going to say. Thank you. <laughs> I have a motion by Ms. Powers, a second by Ms. I'm sorry, I have a motion by Ms. Bride to second by Ms. Balfour um, to approve the motion as stated by our attorney. Uh, is there any questions? Mine is, is just so that I understand, so, and, and mainly I'm saying this for, the, for anyone listening and understanding, we're not entering into a lawsuit in this. Correct. We are not um, seeking anything other than our current attorney to be able to review the case. Right, well, you know, the part of the lawsuit it, it is regarding the, the bid and the contract that we had with Goodfellows when we bid out the, the trash stuff a, a couple of years ago. Um, so part of the issue in the petition for writ is the, the contractual relationship between the school board and Goodfellows and then our home rule powers and I, I like to protect those as much as possible. Um, the court can deny in my motion, the court can say, I'm still, I'm not going to allow you to do it, or they can say yes. So it's really, we don't have a right to do it, but we're just asking the court to allow us as a, we're not, because it will affect us in some way, we need to be able to present, you know, um, a position. Okay. But we're not at this point presenting a position, is correct. that correct? Correct. And this is, there's, and this does not include, there's a, this is the petition for the writ of cert, which is all the administrative law judges ruling. There's also another lawsuit between the county and Goodfellows, separate apart from this, which contains some of these issues in here also. So they kind of like got dual paths that were going at that time. I think they've abated that lawsuit while they're working on this one. So thank you. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries 5-0. <clears throat> With that, um, board members, uh, I'm going to just ask over there. Oh, Mr. Clotter, did you, I apologize. Did you have anything else you wanted to add before? No, sir. Thank okay. You. Mr. Dodd. <clears throat> First thing I'd like to mention is uh, the student code of conduct meeting is coming up November 30th, and I'm on that committee. And so I wanted to know if you had any suggestions or any recommendations 
uh, in regards to the revision of student code of conduct, and you can uh, relate those. You can relay those to me in this meeting today, or if you don't have any, you can uh, email uh, Mrs. Allegretta, um, who will be the chairperson for that meeting, and she will um, bring those up before the committee. So I just wanted to make sure the board uh, was aware of that. Is also, Ron, I would yes. like to share something with people more student board that I meet with once a month. Uh -huh. They would like us to change the pictures. I think we still use stick Stick pictures. They, that's the biggest joke to them. They're okay with the dress code because I keep telling them we've got to start somewhere. But they always say, Miss Emma, will you change those pictures? And I told them I don't know that we're going to do that. So you can share that with your community. Okay. All right. And my, and my, and my, I was going to say, it's a meeting I was at at Kendra Middle School. There was a mom that said, it was inconsistent. Page 30 says standing, and then the page 31 has them sitting. Okay. Just inconsistent. Oh. <laughs> I know. Can you put that in writing to me, please? I will. <laughs> <laughs> That's in my head. Mom's going to be, <clears throat> Mom's going, Mom's going to be there with that. Yeah, I got it. I can handle that. Anything else? Okay. Um, of course, I was involved with school improvement plan meetings, as all of you were. I was at uh, Citrus High and was primary for Little City Elementary and uh, Central Ridge Elementary Schools, and we had good uh, good meetings there <coughs> with the administration, and uh, so that was very positive. I uh, went to the Upward Bound breakfast uh, twice, once for primary and then once for middle high school. Um, was took part in that community alliance of Citrus County. They had a peace march to stand against bullying, and so that was uh, a good event on October 21st. And I'm looking forward to the Veterans Day Parade tomorrow. I'm very thankful for our nation and uh, the veterans, the service of our veterans. And um, I understand I'm supposed to be there at 9.30. Yeah, we'll talk about it here at the end okay. and just right. make sure that we get everybody's on the same page. Okay, thank you. That's all I have. I've been doing the same thing he's been doing, only different schools. <laughs> <laughs> what he said? <laughs> Well, I did go to home to Sasa. I went to uh, every school at the Canto. Yeah. Crest, LPS, LMS. I missed LHS because they moved the date. I won't be there, I'll be at the Canto. I'll show you guys. That's it. Okay. okay. So it's science fair time. <laughs> I get that too. I definitely enjoyed being a part of the judging teams and it's, it's just the kids do such an amazing job and obviously the teachers are the force behind with the final product so also I wanted to say that I've got a value adjustment board meeting coming up on the 12th and um, a long, I'm sorry long range planning committee meeting on the 12th and a value adjustment board meeting on the 16th and I will tell you today is my last as far as meetings um, this will be my last message as a board member, and we have an audience coming in to hear all about it. So, um, I just need you guys to know that it was a tough decision, but the bottom line is, my husband and I have made some tremendous sacrifices for me to be here. And not only was it a financial sacrifice, but also um, it was a required move in order to be able to serve as your District 4 representative. And with that said, the phone's been ringing off the hook, text messages and emails asking me the big question, why would I leave a position that I worked so hard to obtain, and um, why would you do that to go to the academy as their administrator? And my response is very simple. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. And that's really the bottom line. There is only one Academy of Environmental Science and the administrative position has only been available and open twice since its inception. So it's a very uh, unique opportunity, unique facility. And when a kid can step out of a classroom, go out to a kayak, and pull water samples from fresh and salt right there and bring it back to their own classroom, that's, that's what the definition of unique is all about. And we have that here in Citrus County. And I am touched and very honored that the board of directors of the academy chose me to fulfill the, to fill the shoes of Ben Stockcheck. Um, as an administrator with experience serving on multiple boards, I'll be able to help shape education reform with a strong voice 
from the front line because of having the direct connection with staff and students. And in addition, by accepting their offer, I'll be able to live another chapter in my life regret-free. So, tomorrow I'm going to be walking in the Veterans Day Parade, and I'm going to be reflecting over all of those years that various veterans have been coming into my classrooms, whether it's elementary, middle, or high, WTI or the Academy, and sharing their many stories. And on Thanksgiving Day, I've got a long list of things that I'm going to share about how I'm thankful. So, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Balfour. <clears throat> well, I also went to the different schools. It's the same yeah. meetings time, the different schools. <laughs> Western River High School in Fernando and Renaissance. And I learned uh, a lot about how everyone is really working together to make the whole system in, in Citrus County work. They communicate with each other when they find something that's really working well and share that information so I, I was quite impressed with how everyone was doing the job they wanted to do and doing it well it was, it was excellent another thing the art festival was this past weekend and i see mr clauder there and i have a thank you from some people to you for for you and your family coming uh denise and kyle and, and uh mr clauder they came, they usually, I think every year they come and they take and talk with the students and the, the students are very appreciative and the teachers are very appreciative. So many kudos go your way. Another thing, this, the judges who judge the student art came from, uh, from uh, Gainesville and two of them were talking to me and they said, you know, this work is very good the students have. And they said, we are so glad that we weren't in high school competing with this group when we were doing our work. <laughs> because it was that good. So uh, at a great festival, a, great, a lot of work by the students, excellent work. And winners, every high school uh, had a, a distinguished award and they went over because they talked about their work. So uh, everyone, every single high school did well. Um, we're gonna run out of time before I get through my list of things. So I'm gonna take care of some um, business first. Um, as Ms. Balfour mentioned, because this will be her, you know, while this may be her last meeting, she's still working <laughs> until, <laughs> as a board member until um, until the first of January. I mean, of December, right? December first. Yeah, so, um, but I'll but, still be working with you because I'll be giving her an Academy report. That's right. That's right. You'll be back for that. The um, but we do have an assignment um, of Miss Balfour's that we really need to get addressed because it will be starting to take um, effect immediately. That's the Value Adjustment Board. Um, value Adjustment Board, for those of you who don't understand, is when there's appeals made uh, to their property taxes, one of the required seats that's on there is a school board member. And with that, um, I would like to, if he is willing to accept it um, as the uh, chairman, current chairman, um, offer it to Mr. Dodd, if you'd be willing to serve as on the Value Adjustment Board as the board representative. I don't think I have a problem with that. Are the meeting dates the same every no, month, or no, they got to change? Okay. Okay. And the first meeting for you would be actually December seventh, I believe, at nine a.m. Um, um, is it the fourteenth? Okay. I apologize. Um, so it would be the fourteenth, and and that, um, Mr. Dodd is, and they'll get you more information on it. But it's actually at the courthouse and you'll sit in their, their chambers. And we're very important it. If the school board member is not there, they can't have a meeting. <coughs> so, or Linda will fart. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm second. Yeah, and I think what we'll need to do is, is come up with an alternate, um, and if uh, and I'll, I'll let the new chair can decide who, uh, who wants there to be an alternate, um, but the first priority to me was to make sure that we had a, uh, um, a board member representative for that. So that with that, and we have a five o'clock um, certain um, for presentations for the Making a Difference Award, and I believe we have our first group here, which is the Florida uh, Sewing So I'm sorry, Sewing Society, and so I will turn that over to Ms. Hemel.
before I call the group up today, I just want to give a little highlight about today that we all know that 10.30 this morning, this morning we received the worst nightmare phone call we could receive for any school district or any community. However, when we went out to Lacanto High School and we started meeting the Sheriff's Department, I have to commend everyone out there, Lacanto High School. They told us that that was probably the best full lockdown that they've ever seen. Um, you know, it breaks your heart on why some student would get to that point. But I kept thinking all day that we were out there and, and organizing things and parents calling because you know now you know your kids are safe but you still want to hug your baby even though you know they're safe. But I couldn't help but think about these groups coming today because when I met with the media today, they asked what do we keep to telling students and it is about the relationships we build in our schools, whether it's with us, with the staff, with the students, whether it's with our teachers who do phenomenal jobs and if it's with our community who do all do certainly make a difference in our kids every single day because you make sure that many of our needs are met because of the things you do. And I had the pleasure of visiting a group in Lacanto. And when I went into that, I, was just, I walked in the door and I was just amazed at the sewing machines that were just clicking away. Um, so if you ladies, everyone involved with the Sew City, so society, if you would come forward, I'd like to talk about you for a couple minutes. <clears throat> they are also going to bring garments that um, they have made. The first year they did this, they made 200 garments for our students. The second year, 250 garments. And year three, they made 350 garments that they take out to the schools and give them to our students who may need something special. Wait. And I said that they have got to come to a board meeting so we could show this group off, these precious, precious ladies. And does somebody want to tell us how many ladies so? They had someone out there instructing that day. How many ladies so? About, about 70 ladies so and make these outfits so that they can share with our students. So if you all would like to show them one at a time, it's your fashion show right now. Okay. Uh, this is the dress that we've been sewing this past year for the children, and we will be doing this again at Easter time. In the winter time, we make this a jumper by uh, putting a long sleeve t-shirt. I donated this before and they brought it back because I had forgotten to put the zipper in it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I would bring it back. It has a zipper in it. <laughs> this is the same. And when you do that, introduce yourself. Oh, my name is Carol Jewell. And I just mentioned to him, three of us named up your former educators. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, I make a lot of dresses, and I'm, I'm really she's into She's the jacket. There's the jacket. Jacket. all the jackets. Isn't that amazing? She makes hundreds of jackets. And we were told last year for the older kids to start, like, purses and things. So I'm going to be doing purses and other kinds of garments this year. This is another one of the party dress, we call it. And we have a friend who lives down close to Tampa who is 86 years old and sews every day, makes dresses for little girls, and she donates them to us for our project. She's a wonderful lady. And this year, some of our members started learning to paint. So we had a great many hand-painted garments and those we donated back in September, like this one. It's lots of fun for us, too. Another one of the jackets, and I pass back to the ladies, to Sandy and to Ginger, some of the t-shirts that are taken to the skirts are made, embroideries put on the t-shirts so that they have a complete outfit that they can fit in if they so desire. And I would like to add, if I might, Sam, that I our organization started in Citrus County, and we are statewide. We have about 600 people statewide. And um, Carol is our secretary for the state. And my 
with friend D. She's older than I am, but she handles the newsletter. <laughs> so <laughs> they have then she. Our mission from the very beginning was to teach sewing because they don't have sewing in the school business. And so we hope that we're encouraging some of the younger ones to do it. But it's real good therapy for our older members, and we have so many retired teachers, <laughs> that um, they get together and they socialize, and they do not know it, how much talent they have. But when you tell them it's for the children, it's amazing what they'll turn out mm -hmm. for our children. Mm -hmm. And we have a type of program like this in every chapter, from Miami up to Tallahassee, but nobody does the school children like we do. <laughs> <laughs> We're always unique in Citrus County. So as um, I would like to present today to the Florida Sewing Society, the Superintendent's Making a Difference Award. is Two Good Souls. Anyone associated with Two Good Souls, would you please come forward? Two Good Souls began 13 years ago. It was created by the Friends of Nature Coast Volunteer Advisory Board as a way to honor the victims and responders of 9-11. Two Good Souls donates approximately 70% of what is collected every year to Citrus County Schools. This year, this organization collected 2,514 pairs of shoes and socks that they collected for our kids. Wow. And we have here what? We have two and we had one pair of shoes size 22. <laughs> All shoes and socks stay in Citrus County to be distributed to children in need. The program is run by the Retired and Senior Volunteer Program, known as RSVP, that delivers the collection boxes, picks up the collection boxes filled with donations, sorts, counts, and presents the donations to community nonprofit organizations including Citrus County Schools kids, so thank you. So I would like to present you today with the Superintendent's Making a Difference Award for what you do for our kids. Ms. Fedoris Franklin. Ms. Fedoris Franklin is our payroll specialist. She and I will be presenting award, an award to Ms. Stacy Taylor today. And if Stacy, if you will come forward. Stacy is a payroll analyst in our department, and I would like to share with you 
everything Stacy is phenomenal not just as well as all of our department but we really want to recognize her today it gives me great pleasure recommending Stacy Taylor for the superintendents making a difference award Stacy has done a wonderful job in her position as payroll analyst and is an asset to our organization during her tenure with the payroll department she has excellent written and verbal communication skills is extremely organized takes the initiative when completing tasks and is able to effectively multitask to ensure that all projects are completed in a timely manner. Stacy is always willing to take on any job no matter how big or how small. Her efforts and attention to detail have saved the district thousands of dollars and to this date in the last three years she has saved the district about five hundred thousand dollars in her efforts. Stacy has truly made a difference in our school district. She is always willing to offer assistance and has an excellent rapport with her inter-office co-workers as well as district employees. The expectation for the Human Resources Department is to ensure our employees feel welcome and supported throughout their career with Citrus County Schools. Stacy exemplifies the meaning of quality customer service. She is patient and thorough when answering payroll questions. Stacy's right outside my office and she will explain it to one of our employees. Doesn't matter how many times she is calm and patient and make sure they understand it before they end the phone call, so I appreciate that. She was always positive and helpful when working with other members of the department. One coworker actually wrote this before the award was even going to be announced. Stacy consistently goes above and beyond her job description to help others, not only in this department, but in others as well. This is not a once in a while thing, it's daily. She should be commended for her dedication and endless effort to improve and enhance everyone's ability. We want to take this opportunity to recognize and thank Stacy Taylor for her dedication to the students and staff of Citrus County Schools. year pens. Well, the reason we didn't give out 30-year pens is because years ago staff usually retired after 30 years, and now with the drop they go 35 years and sometimes up to 38 years. So we went back, met with HR, and decided, you know what, it'd be a good idea to go hit back and recognize all of our 30-year staff members. So today, the first one I'd like to call up is Miss Ginger Bryant, and Ginger had 30 years of teaching in the district and 15 years on the board. began teaching in pre-K. <laughs> and the next one I'd like to recognize is Linda Verderami. She's been with our school district for 31 years and 21 years in the current position, and she's probably got more secrets about board members than we'll ever know. <laughs> Well deserved. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> 
So this is a very special person. Last year, we asked him to do what hadn't been done for a very long period of time. We asked him to be chairman a second time because we're doing so much with the digital world. And Thomas like lives in the digital world. I think at night he just goes there and he comes back in the morning. And he agreed to do so. It's a lot of work for a chairman. It's not just the title, but you have a lot of meetings to go to. You have a lot of committees to be on. You have a lot of organization to do. And Thomas just took it on and did his thing and, and did all with uh, computers and all this kind of stuff that most of us don't quite understand, but he understands it all. So we have a little plaque for him. And I'll read what it says. The Thomas Kennedy, geek, no, this is that. <laughs> this is Thomas Kennedy, in recognition of your dedicated service to the children and citizens of Citrus County as school board chairman, Okay, before I continue, we have a five, uh, I'm sorry, I just got to make sure I go back. We have a 515 citizens comment uh, time, and I'm going to read this maybe for my last time, and this is concerning public speakers. Each listed speaker will be allowed three minutes to make a presentation. Speakers are asked to address the issue at hand and refrain from using obscenities, vulgarities, or other breaches of respect, and refrain from words or statements, which from their usual construction and common acceptance are construed as insults and tend to incite violence or breach of peace. We ask that you model the following characteristics, traits, cooperation, responsibility, citizenship, kindness, respect, honestly, honesty, and self-control and tolerance. The school board will not discuss or take action on any presentation. Any person uh, or persons present, uh, presenting who wish to speak must fill out a green card, which are located at the back of the room. And the chair calls Ron Hansen. Hi. Thanks for. Uh listen to me today. Uh, I have one thing though, I, I'm a bigger geek than you are. <laughs> <laughs> I was on the internet before I'm born Benedict. <laughs> anyway, um, my concerns are uh, dovetail with what Mr. Simon was talking about earlier as far as report cards are concerned. Um, I'm going to throw a bunch of dates at you here, so I don't know if you want to write this stuff down or anything, but uh, last period in um, 2015 ended May 22nd. And we did not receive report cards in that, from that period until July 27th of the same year, two months later. Now, the new period started again August 10th and ran through October 9th. Report cards were actually due the 15th or the 16th of this month, well, of last month rather. Well, today's November 10th, we still don't have report cards. Now, if things go according to plan and the way Mr. Simon was speaking, we probably wouldn't get until the middle of December or maybe even January. Now, I have, we've had students in school, and a lot of you know who the students are because we've been here before, but uh, the, we've had students in, this, in the uh, school system for 10 years, and the, oldest, the youngest one now is just graduating this year. Matt, I could be in the parade tomorrow as well. He's the brass captain for the Citrus High School Band, and he will, in all likelihood, be going to Stetson University <coughs> on a music scholarship in the fall. So he's really, he plays at the, uh, the uh, Memorial Day, he does taps, he does a lot, of, a lot of the community items. And I'm concerned about him being, getting his transcripts and everything on time to get his uh, acceptance at Stetson. 
Now he's already been there. They they love him. They they're ready to take him in, but you still you're going to have to have the documentation. And I'm concerned with the fact that that with all this stuff that's running so far behind, months behind on all these different grades, that he's not going to have transcription time or any other students for that matter. And this is becoming a habit, and it's been going on for quite a while. And I don't know if it's a, a data pr problem or if it's a, a coordination problem between the different agencies or whatever it is, but we need to do something about uh, a timely uh, dispersal of these grades. And that's basically all I have to say about it. Um, you know, I, I pulled a few numbers up here, and I don't probably don't you probably want to hear this, but um, your your budget, your school budget for the county is what, about two hundred ten million dollars a year. Uh, the whole judicial budget for the entire state of Florida is five hundred forty eight million dollars. Now we're talking about every court and every judge and every your budget is half of what the entire state is. So with all that money, and I understand that you know there's lots of things you do that they don't do, but where is that money going that, especially I know you're, as far as IT is concerned, you, you put a lot of stock and trade in that. I was at a, I had a computer business 25 years in South Florida. All my stuff started with Unix, and like I said, DARPA was running the internet back then. So it's not like it can't be done. Um, we use Skyward. Quite often, it's very, it's, it's iffy at the best. And it's always, the, the, the teachers don't really keep it up to date. It's always two, three weeks behind. You can't check on grades. You know, I, again, it's just, my, my opinion, it's not being uh, followed through as well as it could be. I don't know if you have any questions to me, but. That's not what we do. But you, if, if you're willing, it's your last meeting. You should. You, you, can, you can break the rules. <laughs> just made that statement. For me, it's always this is the awkward moment yeah, when you, people have a chance to come up and they speak. And the protocol, as he stated before, you had the opportunity to speak, is that we're not supposed to say anything as far as board response to you. But I will say that it's a concern for everybody, and I know that the state. Um, because they they have their fingerprints on the final product when it comes to reporting. Um, as you can tell, there's a huge transition taking place right now, but the real concern, like we stated about those transcripts, and, and hopefully we'll be able to have an answer for you. So with that said, this is my last opportunity <laughs> to talk. So. Well, I, my, my main concern is that I, you know, I'm going to old school. Here I am, 68 years old. So when I was in high school, it was you know back in when we were using some shovels. Yeah. But they, you know, the teachers wrote out their grades. They got put in a report card. It went to the to the uh, the principal. They they sent them out, and that was the end of it. You know, and I know there's a lot more going on now where you have to keep track of all those statistics and you know FCAC grades and all those other things going on. But it has got to be an easier way. I mean. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And, and I would share with you, I would encourage you to sit down with research and accountability um, because the re and that was Patrick Simon. The reason is, is because um, for those, in the, and I'm really talking as much to those in the audience um, that, and that are seeing us on camera, is that we can't give those grades out until the state provides us their information. So the reason that those report cards can't go out is because the state hasn't provided us with the information in order to have a legal grade. It's been an issue, and it's not an issue that's a district issue. The district has done their due diligence and their requirements for that. It's the state. So I would want to make that clear that the state in, I mean, that the district in its budget has provided for that. We have accounted for that, and we've done that. We have to wait for the state. Um, we were ready to go in, in long before May because we have to certify graduations. And so in order to do that, um, the state had to provide pros, uh, provisions so that we could do that. But guess what? They issued grades out in the summertime, which then impacted students. So this is an issue that's a legislative issue, unfortunately, and it's an issue with the Florida Department of Education. It's an issue that, as board members, we have fought very much. 
Um, but for example, for those of you who don't know, 30% of many of our courses grades are required to be the state's tests. They don't give us that grade information and we can't give a final grade. So we're, we, we're with you on it, but it's not a local issue on that. The local issue, we're doing that, that side of it. And I would encourage you, please talk to Patrick Simon's department, because I think they could walk you through all of the details of what they do. They do that to us um, in a number of meetings, both individually and collectively. Um, but that's really where, where the issue, and, and you're not wrong. And they are real issues. And you can talk to Tallahassee as well. Oh, well, I have no please. problem with that. <laughs> please do. Uh, one other quick comment. I have set up a website called citruscountyspeaks.com, which I invite all of the board members to apply to because I'm, they're going to be asking this four different forums on there. One of them deals with the school board. And it would be nice if you would communicate back and forth between these people and yourself. Well, and I will just tell you that just so you know, due to, to public records um, laws and sunshine laws, our attorney would tell us that we, we, we cannot be doing that. So you're, you're going to find elected officials are going to have trouble uh, interacting with that for that reason. You better shut down your Facebook. <laughs> well, that's a one way with, with not us. That's why. Um, yeah, and we have to, and, and for those who don't know, we have to actually archive all of our conversations that on Facebook or otherwise that are communication regarding those issues. <laughs> um, with that, um, I've got some, some reports and some housekeeping stuff. First of all, um, we are going to meet tomorrow at, did we say 9 a.m.? 9.30. 9.30. Look for the big bus, uh, Doug, so however it's easy to park, do that. Um, and then a lot of times we try and take that bus back over to get our cars. So, um, but we usually meet there and then we'll, we'll all walk out. We usually walk in front of the bus. Um, <laughs> okay, maybe that wasn't the best choice of words. <laughs> um, exactly. And, uh, and then we, and we'll go out that way. Um, Pleasant Grove is usually often there, I think, um, marching along with us. So uh, there'll be that. So 9.30, look for the big bus. And uh, if you get there ahead of time, you get to see all the floats and the other stuff. And, and walk them around. Um, just an update on the um, election, uh, the lecture, how they call it, they call it the elected leadership summit um, that uh, Mr. Kitchen at the Board of County Commission is uh, proposing. I had an opportunity to meet with uh, Randy Oliver and uh, he talked about some of the things that they would like to see presented. And I had an opportunity with Mr. Blocker to meet with Mr. Oliver a little more than a month ago, and he was shocked to, he really didn't understand that the school district does not set the millage rate for the majority of our funding, with the exception of the discretionary amount of point, uh, 0.75, or point, 0.746 as well as the uh, capital of 1.5. He assumed like the Board of County Commission, you needed more money, you just go and set your, your millage rate. Um, so because he was shocked, he felt like many of the commissioners would not under, have known that, and as well as the other constitutional officers. So he was suggesting as part of the preliminary conversation that that could be a presentation that the school board um, could have done that we would do. There's going to be um, um, an opportunity for, I believe, um, the next chairperson to be able to sit down and have that conversation too, and for the chair people to, to meet and work that out. And then if there are things that this body wants to ask or add into part of that, um, as well as really I think the, our attorney's advice on that will will be paramount. There'll be still time before we come to a definitive uh, format. But I did want to just give you that update. One of the meetings that I had the opportunity of uh, attending that I sit on is the high school directions. And what who sits on that is each of the high school um, administrative teams along with 
um, ESE department, um, so, uh, student services. This is really where often some of the, the vision of our high school goes. One of the conversations that was, I believe, paramount and very critical and important, and I just want to compliment um, Mr. Rowland who facilitated that meeting, is our math and science uh, sequencing. And that is, is particularly for our um, students that are challenged in math and science, uh, we have at some of our schools Algebra 1A, Algebra 1B, and the talk is, is should we then have, um, which is a year long typically, is whether we should have geometry as a year long. Informal geometry, geometry, or a year long worth of, of geometry. And that, so that was being discussed, that's being um, discussed. The other has to do with scheduling of environmental science and biology and the sequencing for that. I think what was important was, and, and I think it was Mr. Clauder that indicated, you know, in years past there was a lot of conversation about ELA, and it was kind of, it, it was prudent to have conversations about math and, and science right now. And the conversations were clearly about exactly what Mr. Simon talked about, and that is our level threes, which we have cons you know, considered and the state has considered proficient, or do they have the standards knowledge to be successful as they move up that chain in sequencing of both math as well as the sciences? So there was not a, a definitive answer put there. It was definitely a conversation. It was about continuing that conversation at the departmental levels. The other conversation that was talked about was um, requirement for um, geography as a required course. Um, that's unique to Citrus County. Um, it is not, though, required for IB. IB is the only group that is exempt from that due to the fact that by um, Florida statute, they can take, or they do take, an additional social studies course later on. So they're not getting less social studies, but they actually have a different sequencing of their uh, social sciences. Oh, thank you. Wait, I'm at 5.30, I'm sorry. Oh, my, my color camera. So I'm going to go ahead and pause and go to my 5.30. Thank you. Um, I'm going to um, recess our regular meeting and open up our public hearing to approve revisions to policies 4.30, 4.72, 5.62, 5.621, 5.621, and 5.70. And Mr. Dixon? Good afternoon, board members. We have uh, <clears throat> policy updates tonight. This is the final public hearing. The first one is a request to approve the revision of policy 4.30 regarding challenged materials. The revision adds citations 1000.21 and 1006.28 Florida statutes, adds sections 1 and 2, and, cha and the changes are consistent with Florida statute 1006.28. This basically lays out the procedure to challenge educational materials. I'd like to make a motion to approve the revision of policy 4.30, challenge materials. Second. A motion by Ms. Balfour, a second by Ms. Bryant, to approve the revisions to policy 4.30 uh, challenged materials. Is there anyone wishing to come forward to comment on policy 4.30? Anyone wishing to come forward? If there's any other questions, we can go ahead and... Any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. The next one is a request to approve policy 4.72 regarding homeless students. This provides us section 1C and adds section 2. Also adds citation 743.067 Florida statutes. I make the motion that we approve the revision of policy 4.72 homeless students. I have a motion by Mr. Dodd, a second by Ms. Powers, to approve the, approve the revisions to policy 4.72, homeless students. Anyone wishing to come forward and talk on policy 4.72, homeless students? Anyone wishing to come forward? 
Are there any questions, board members? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries 5-0. And the third one is a request to approve policy 5.62, administration of medication by school personnel. This adds citation 381.88, 381.885, 768.13, and 1002.20 Florida statutes. There are no language changes. These are citation changes only. I move to approve the revision of policy 5.62, administration of medication school personnel. Second. Motion by Ms. Bryan, a second by Ms. Balfour to approve the revisions to policy 5.62, administration of medication by school personnel. Anyone wishing to come forward to comment on policy 5.62, administration of medication by school personnel? Anyone wishing to come forward? Are there any questions, board members? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. The next one is a related policy, uh, request to approve policy 5.621, student medications. This revises section 2C and D, adds citations 381.88 and 381.885 Florida statutes, as well as the corresponding administrative code citations. And this is basically the policy that allows for the EpiPen should we have them in the future. And the policy. Five point six two one student medication. Second. Motion by Ms. Powers, second by Mr. Don to approve the revisions to policy five point six two one student medication. Anyone wishing to come forward to talk on policy five point six two one student medications? Anyone wishing to come forward? Any questions, board members? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries five zero. And your final policy revision this evening is 5.70 student records. This adds sections 2, 3, and 4, revises section 6A, grammatical correction, and section 5, and adds citation 1002.222. I move to approve the revision of policy 5.70 student records. Second. Motion by Ms. Bryan, second by Ms. Balfour to approve the revisions of policy 5.70 student records. Anyone wishing to come forward to talk on policy 5.70 student records? Anyone wishing to come forward? Any questions, board members? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dixon. Um, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I had forgot to ask you during your portion um, on the elected leader summit. Did they give? Oh, let me let me just adjourn this one. I'm Go sorry. ahead. That's okay. Um, we're going to go ahead and adjourn then our uh, public hearing and we'll reopen our regular meeting. I'm sorry, go ahead, Mr. Duff. No, I just meant to ask you about the elected leader summit. Did they give you a date? They did. I'm trying to see if I still have it here. Um, it was a January date that they proposed. Okay, well, I'm sure that I'll, 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 I'll get it and I'll give it to Ms. Verderami and she'll get it to us. Thank you. I said it at the last meeting, but I didn't write it down this time. I apologize, Mr. Duff. Um, just that, that I want to f uh, finish up on the school directions um, that uh, the discussion of um, whether to continue to require to have uh, ge uh, geography is uh, whether that still is something they're going to continue to recommend. Again, IB is exempt by law. Basically, those students start out with world history or AP world history, but then they take um, a different sequencing of social studies. And here's where it's important. They still have um, the amount of social study requirements that we require. And the concern is, at least during the conversation, is if we don't continue to require it, which the, that base knowledge of geography is, what are they going to take instead? And are we going to have just more PE courses um, as electives that those students will take. And that was one of the concerns. My concern is, is that if you're not in IB, you then can't jump right to um, world history, AP world history, and then add another social science later. So there was conversation to say, well, could we then, or should we consider having an equally rigorous social studies course um, that is kind of an exemption. There's no recommendation right now 
they thought they should send it back to the um, social studies department meetings as well as to the TOSAs and to the schools for further discussion. I thought that was a prudent uh, move. Um, my feeling is, again, is I just want to make sure our students have options, but I don't want to add more PE courses for them to be taking, because uh, that really isn't what we want to accomplish. Um, the, the last committee um, that I was also uh, attending, um, we are reviewing um, the architectural bids for the um, architecture for the master planning at Floral City. We have uh, narrowed it down to three that will then uh, move on to give us presentations in about a week and a half. Those presentations will then be scored and that um, architect will then be presented to the board as uh, the recommended choice for um, if and when uh, Mr. Burkhoff can then negotiate a contract. Right now there is nothing more than the qualifications of the architectural firm that is being decided right now, other than the parameters the board has already approved for that project. But I'm extremely excited to know that we're moving forward on that. So I'm optimistically hopeful that we as a board can uh, have some options that we can hopefully plan for very, very soon. I wholeheartedly agree. <laughs> I thought you would, Mr. Dunn. Um, lastly, I would just say the SIP meetings that I attended, um, one in particular comes to mind. They're always an outstanding time to sit down with the school leaders, the district staff, and um, as a school board member to sit there in those meetings. Um, but one school in particular, um, I just was so proud of because their scores might not have been everything that they had wanted based on what the state has done. But the team, um, or I should say Mr. Clotter's team, um, educational services, they, they had very frank conversations. The administrator had very frank conversations during that meeting of the direction that the school needs to go to improve. Now, I would keep in mind that what people don't realize outside of that room often is how far exceeding that school is compared to um, ourselves outside of Citrus County. But in Citrus County, we have a little higher standard that we've become accustomed to, and this, this administrator felt that way too. So the conversation revolved around very specific needs that they, that administrative team felt that they could use to improve. And Mr. Clotter, I commend your staff who was there to um, offer that assistance, have those conversations. Um, Ms. Douglas, who's been in those trenches, Mr. Hebert, who's been in those trenches, um, they offered um, truly conversations that I could tell were meaningful to that administrator. And to be kind of a, a, a fly on the wall in that room was just remarkable. So I just wanted to express that. Lastly, Ms. Balfour, this is your last meeting with us. And we want to um, say that we appreciate and respect um, and thank you for the service that you gave to our district, to our students in this capacity. And we wish you the very best as you take on your new role in leadership and affecting more students' lives. So we wish you the very best. Is there anything at this time? If there isn't, we will be adjourning this meeting, but we will be recessing, I mean, we will be pausing until we have a six o'clock certain, at which time the superintendent will take over that meeting um, for our organizational meeting. So we, at this point, we will be adjourned in our regular meeting. Thank you very much.